Hi there. Okay, now we've got a couple of images here. Um, we've got a, a girl with some hair and we've got some mountains. Now this video is in response to a lot of people who've asked me about how to get rid of the halo around hair when we select hair. Um, it's also a little bit more about selecting hair from a um, reasonably difficult background. First of all we'll bring on our, our layer set up here so we can see that okay now <coughs> if we have a look at this we'll zoom in on the hair just come in a bit closer I'll show you what we've got this is a pretty high resolution photograph and as you can see here there's a lot of fine little hairs there um, the higher the resolution the better in order to select all that hair we'll have a look at our three channels red green and blue and we'll see that red has got the greatest contrast between the hair and the background so we'll duplicate that okay that's our red channel now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you um, a really quick way simple way to um, contrast out this particular selection um, we want to be able to select the hair and not the background so we want the the hair to be white and the background to be black um, the easiest way to do that is if we bring in our curves see there's our curves um, window now if we click on the, the the black eyedropper here this is the dark area and just sample in the background you will see that we've we've changed our curve slightly if we go lighter to one of the lighter areas we've changed our curve even more there we can then go to the foreground and the lighter color and you can see that the darker that we that we select the more of that is returned to white we're basically creating a contrast between black and white and as you can see now the hairs are sticking out against the background I'll just make that change there okay this is very quick very simple um, there are ways to do it more accurately but we're just doing this quickly for now um, and in fact this whole video is the, really just a way to show you how um, not ordinarily it would take a lot longer than the, the eight or nine minutes we're going to spend on it here right that's our red um, thing but what we're going to do now is just take a brush and we'll brush out this area here to white as I say we really want everything to be black and white um, I can zoom right in I won't go too far in here but I can zoom right in here and get get this very accurate um, as I say I'm doing it quite quickly so we'll just reduce the brush size there and we'll just sort of bang it out here reasonably quickly here right the end result of all of this we want um, pure black and pure white I'll just change this to black and I'll blacken out some of these areas in the background here um, as I say and I'm being quite rough here I would say to do this properly this particular um, job is a couple of hours to have a, a decent sort of a setup okay right that'll do for now we'll just go back to our normal image and if we go load selection you see that we end up loading our red copy selection there it is there if I do a copy and paste then turn off the background you can see that we've got our hair selected there and not the background okay 
what I've done here is I've made another layer and I've given it a color this is really just so that we can see our hair against a very plain background and in this case it's a lighter background rather than dark and you can see we've actually got a bit of a a change of color in the hair um, this is sort of a halo um, this is something we don't want to happen because it makes it look as though the hair has been selected the way to get rid of this and the whole point of this video is if we lock that transparency we either um, going to use our clone stamp tool here and you sample inside the hair where you've got a nice solid area there and you paint it over on the hair see that then what we're doing is we're coloring that hair the same color as the rest of the hair um, any little pixels we've picked up from the background in the selection process is being colored the same color as the hair so it renders it um, uh, not a problem another way to do it would be to sample the hair color and then just use a brush and just paint it um, we'll bring our bring it down here and just just paint it out there that's a bit quicker probably not quite as good I prefer personally to use the clone stamp tool but you see we're just just painting it out the same color as the rest of the hair all right we'll just do a little bit up here to show you all the hair is now exactly the same color there and that's generally not quite the way it is hair tends to be a lot of different colors so clone stamping is better see if we click in here and do it up there see how there's a little bit more texture to the hair okay I'm not going to do the whole thing as I say we're just doing this as a sample so we've got a little bit here that we've set up turn the background off you can see that okay now we'll get our mountain picture we'll get our girl layer and we'll just drag her onto the mountain you can see my selection hasn't been perfect but then that's not what we were looking at okay, just position her there and we'll zoom in and if we look over here make that a bit bigger so we can zoom in and look a bit closer if we zoom in here see the hair doesn't quite look right against that mountain background we've picked up pixels out of the back but if we come around over this side where the hair has been colored look at that you see that that's pretty good now the only other thing we may do is we might just give that a little bit of a blur you see we use a blur brush there that gives it just a little bit more realism because it might be just ever so slightly out of focus okay that is how you get rid of the halo on here on a difficult background um, as I say if I spend an hour maybe a couple of hours on this properly I could make it look as though this girl was sitting with her back to the mountains exactly as it looks on screen all right you wouldn't be able to tell the difference just zoom in again look at that see <laughs> Do you want some more? Okay, well what I have here is a book, 25 Essential Photoshop Moves, and inside there's 175 pages of really cool Photoshop tricks and tutorials. Okay, I sell this book for $59 online, but it's yours free if you go to freephotoshopbook.com. If you like, you can check out theelectricartist.com for more videos.